Karibu kwenye msasa where we talk to successful people about faith. So Edwin, um what's that one thing um that you believe in that most people don't agree with you? Hmm. Well, People don't agree with me on a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a very polarizing person to everybody, to my family, to my business partners and everybody. Okay, one thing that people don't agree with me. Okay, I I'll, I'll give you an anecdote. I've been told in three separate occasions that I'm an anomaly in this market. Anomaly, okay? Yes that and I was like what what do you mean I'm like a tumor or a cancer and I was like no 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 you're something special and I don't agree with that at all okay i believe that the the talent in Tanzania is at a caliber that can rival international people mm-hmm. in terms of creative and when it comes to production when it comes to agency work we are at a place whereby Tanzanians have the skills the capacity and the potential it's just like the only problem is everybody wants to whine a lot and not be accountable for what they're supposed to be doing that's okay. what i believe and a lot of people think about oh uh, they can't do this, Wabongo can't do that, Wabongo mm. LA. And I'm like, no. Wabongo tunaweza. Tena sana. Just as well as everybody else. It's just not a lot of people have drank that Kool-Aid. Kumba, they've been able to achieve all that. Is it a work ethic thing? It's a confidence thing. It's I a think. confidence thing. I think it's a confidence thing because... As of the year 2007, the playing field had been leveled. You could access any bit of information that you want Mm. all over the world. Mm. And when it comes, especially in our industry, all the um, access to every equipment was there. We had credit cards, debit cards, at least by that time. Mm. We had the internet. We had information at the you know. Tip of our fingers, yes. Yeah. Mm. And nobody was willing to take advantage of that because everybody believed that they were not allowed to, they were not supposed to. Mm. You could go online and learn anything. Mm. Get the skills that you need and keep going. Mm. You know, we are at a place whereby, you know, you you need to beg, borrow, and steal. Mm. And you can do whatever you want. Mm. I, for one, I am somebody, and back to your question, like what people don't agree with me because I did everything that people did not expect me to do and I did it well. Mm. You know, I have a lot of firsts. I'm just, I'm one of the guys who's done a lot of firsts Mm. for here Mm. in TZ. Mm. And, you know, it's not as if like I reinvented anything. Mm. I just did what I had to do, did it well, and I got the results from it. Just don't, usually tell people about it. It's just another Tuesday. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So So you don't agree that you are an, an anomaly. I'm not an anomaly. Okay. I'm something I'm yeah. You there's this uh uh, uh statement I heard from somebody. It's like you're a unique snowflake. <laughs> just like everybody else. <laughs> you know? You're a unique snowflake just, just like, like everybody, everybody, just like everybody else. else. There, there's yeah. nothing there is nothing special until you really meet something special. Yes. You know, and yeah. when you meet somebody special, you know, that is but for most part, especially for me, it's mm. been mostly hard work, consistency, resilience, and attitude. Mm. And just saying, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to do it. Yeah. Like, nobody can tell me it's impossible. Yeah. Because I've seen what is possible. So in the aspect of seeing, because don't you think also exposure and being able to see Kinacho Izekana builds on that confidence that many of us Tanzanians lack? Uh, and here's the funny thing. I didn't get it within this industry. Yeah. Like when I was younger, um, when I was in school, I was chubby as a fat kid. Yeah. You know, through O-level. And... 
but I wanted to do well in sports. Yeah. Everybody thought, everybody was like, no, you're smart in school. Stick to the to the stuff that you're good at. I could draw, I could play, do music. I could, I was very good in class, but I wanted to, I wanted to be an athlete as well. But hey, you're a chubby kid. You can't be an athlete. And I remember when I was in school, I was in like form four, right? Classmate of mine. And that day, so this was the incident. On that day, I got to play in one of the big matches at school. Mm. Football. Football, mm. yeah. And I, I, I saved like the, the guy had already passed the keeper and was about to score and I came out of the blue and just like, you know, did what a good defender does. And mm. everybody after the game was like, yo, dude, that was amazing. And the reason why this guy came after me is he didn't want to play because he thought it was better. And that match, that's how I got the opportunity. Mm. And given that opportunity, I actually did very well. Mm. So after the game, everybody's like, yo, yo, you did very well. And then he was like, you know what? I give you a whole year and I don't exercise even one day, I'll still be better than you. That's what he told me. <laughs> mm. And I guess, you know, we're young, he's probably being, you know, I took that, I was like, oh, okay. That's me now. So I was like, well, I will prove you wrong. Mm. So this was 2006, from four. Mm. I started that whole holiday. I was like, I was determined. I found a team to play with and everything and just like started taking it super seriously. <laughs> yeah, like I was like, <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I have a bone to pick with mm. somebody because mm. if he says I can't do it, why? Mm. Well, I haven't tried everything mm. because I've never been given the opportunity. But, you know, it shows that there is potential. Mm. Mm. Why not go for it? Mm. So I did. Mm. So... And a year and let's say a year and a half later, we're in high school. We were in the same high school, and I became the captain. And he, I, me and Pangaez, mm. and the same time, again in Gachadi, Zimbabwe, I got an opportunity. I went abroad, even played football there. And they were like, "Dude, you have so much potential." I was like, "Really." Me, me. <laughs> you know, and I came mm. back and all the people who said like, oh, you don't know how to play. All the people who would bully me at the time. Mm. Like they, they Adi, there's a particular person I was playing for this team, which was like an under 17 academy. I'd gone there before I started that process. And then when I went back and I was a completely different person, this guy comes up to me like, dude, hey man, we've never met before. I was like, dude. We've been in the same team. We've played together before. Like he's like, no, mm. and I was like, oh, so this is what happens when you put in the work, the dedication, the spirit of learning. So that I was like, if I was able to do this, whereby it is completely genetic, it's not even about knowledge or it's purely physical. Yeah, if I can come from a a guy who would not be looked at twice to play football to a person that if I had continued down that path, I would have been probably in the national team or something like that. Mm. Simbabi, you know, that mm. was just, at the time, the Kina Samata was also coming up. Mm. So imagine, given those opportunities and that, unfortunately I got sick and, yeah, and then I decided like, at the time football was not very, you know, Yeah, it didn't lucrative. look like a very <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, my parents were like, mm. So what do you want? Do you want to play football or you want to go to school? I was like, mm. yeah, I think I'll go to school. Mm -mm 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 -mm. But that experience showed me that anything is possible if you put your mind to it. Yeah. And every opportunity given has value because that's an experience. Now, that mindset, I took it with me. And now we start the story of how do I get into production? Mm, right? Okay. And how I got into production is I used to draw from school. And my first business was the t-shirt business. Okay. Yeah. So because I used to like want to do comics, but there was no market for that. I mm. do all these things. Then a friend of mine was like, hey, uh, why don't you just make t-shirts? And he showed me the place where he did it. Mm. And then at the time, my dad had started a business. He needed a logo and a t-shirt. And nice. I just drew the logo mm. on the end. And my first customer, again, you know, mm. like Trump, mm. was my dad. He was like, mm. hey, <laughs> so printing. I was like, okay. Mm. So I did that. Mm. 
And I did that for a while. Then he was like, okay, stop school. I was like, all right. So throughout high school, so this was like from four, from five, from six, I was just doing that business. Okay. You the know, t-shirt business. The t-shirt business. Okay. Drawing, making t-shirts. And I got into fashion apparently through that. Apparently. Yes. One way or another, I got into <laughs> um, Swahili Fashion Week. Mm. And I was the first upcoming designer. Like the first ever. Mm. Now it's like, in, there are like 10, I don't know how many guys mm-hmm. have done it for the past decade. But 2008, I won. Mm. And they're like, hey, mm. there you go. Mm. And But since then, I was always interested in cartoons, animation, and cameras. Mm. I just didn't know where to start. My parents didn't have uh, like a video camera. We mm. just had like, you know, film cameras. I like, take yes. a picture, and then the pictures out is na mikono mbele, and zumiungua, red eyes, and all that. So by that time, we didn't have, I wasn't sure what I wanted. I was. I thought I was going to become an accountant. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Some commercial, some eka. Yeah. I have a degree in finance. Mm. So yeah, by that time, um, I was going to be an accountant. But I had this business, and I thought, man, I'm an accountant, so I should run a business, right? Mm-hmm. And, and something that I'm very good at. So we got out of that. I won the competition. Then I got offered a job. Then through that, I met somebody. His name was, uh, his name is Fashid Najar- Najarian. Okay. So I met him while we we're doing a course after I won the competition. There's this thing sponsored by the British Council was training young entrepreneurs, mm. creative entrepreneurs. Okay. Which said, talent is not enough. Mm. So I went to that course and that course of very interesting people. That's where I made Sauda Simba, mm. Kemi Karikawe, Mustafa Sanali, who was my mentor at the mm, time. Mm. Um, so many people, mm. you know, so many interesting people went through all that. And then I meet this guy called Fashid and he's like, yo, we, uh, we hang out a couple of times, you know, as a young kid, probably what, uh, 18 going 19. He could see I could draw. He was like, oh, you can draw. Cool. Like, you know, you could learn a lot. So he was like, come through. I'll give you a job. There's mm. a job op- opening. It's not going to pay much, but you know. So this, so apparently the job was, I was going to be a marketing and events manager. Okay. At Mbala Mwezi. That time it was under Samaki Samaki in partnership with another um, investor. So I go there, I get to learn from him how to take photos, how mm. to use Photoshop. Mm. And like he had a camera, so I learned that. Mm. And then I get to meet Carlos. Mm. Uh, the, Were you in uni at this time? No, I was still in the hall. Uh, I still in that break, okay. Yeah, mm-hmm. in that break. No, I just finished from six. Yeah. I'm waiting for my results. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not going to national service yet. Mm-mm. So I was like, okay, what can I do? So I get this job and this is my first job straight out of school as a marketing manager. Great title. No money. But yeah, so <laughs> um, Carlos starts teaching me enterprise like the psychology behind people buying. Mm-hmm. And he had some, that guy is brilliant and taught me about branding. And I've already learned some stuff from school. Mm. And this course that I did was a three-week course for creative entrepreneurship. Mm. So I have all these ideas and then there's somebody who's willing to sit you down and tell you how things work. And Fashid, is, he was an aerospace engineer turned photographer and designer. And he was telling me about the concepts of design and all that. And like, oh, this is interesting. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but mm. this is interesting. Yeah. So I learned all these skills, but then it comes a time I have to make a decision. Do I stay? They're like, you don't need university. I'm like, should I go? And then I had to have a heart to have to my dad. I'm telling my father, like, yeah, I don't think I want to go to uni, man. Like, mm. You know, I'm already starting to make money, stuff, and everything. He's like, dude, listen. Just go to uni. You need a backup. Mm. You know, you don't know how it's going to go. It's great. I know you're very enterprising. You're a pretty smart kid. You can make it, but it might help you grow up. Yeah. You're too young. Yeah. You're just 19. You need time to grow up. Mm. I was like, okay. But then I was like, all right, if you want me to grow up, I shouldn't be in Da. Because yeah. if I stay in Da, at the time I got IFM, Tumaini, and uh, St. Augustine. So if you, you stay around, 
you will not, uh, like if I stay in that, I will not study. I know myself. Mm. Too many distractions here. Mm. So I was like, okay, where do you want to go? I was like, let's go to Mwanza. And he was like, why? I was like, there's an airport in case anything happens. We have relatives there in Iringa. And apart from my brother who was also there at the time, mm. but he's graduating next year. So I'll be alone. So I don't know what's going to happen. And in case of any emergencies or whatever, mm. if, and St. Augustine was cheaper. And yeah. I was like, I don't know anything could happen. That plays out in, later in the story. Okay. So he was like, all right, cool, 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 cool. All right, cool. So I go to uni and I get there not knowing that St. Augustine has like the best at the time mass media, mass communication course. Okay. They have their own radio. They have like state-of-the-art production equipment mm. in the university. Mm. And most of these guys are now hired by Azam mm -mm. and the government. You know? mm -mm. So I'm there and I'm like, okay, this is the kind of place I want to be. Mm. So I was like, all right. But you're doing finance. I was doing banking and finance. Banking, buff. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Uh, for us, it was a BBA. And then you specialize in accounting and finance, banking and finance, ah, and, okay. and marketing and procurement. So okay. I had a major argument with my dad because he wanted me to become an accountant. Mm. I wanted to do marketing. And I was not very smart at the time, not understanding. And I thought I was being rebellious. I told him, you know what? I'm going to do banking and finance. If you don't want me to do marketing and I'm not doing accounting because I didn't want to do a whole year of CPA. <laughs> you did. I yeah, because I'm, I said, I ain't doing procurement. Oh my God. I did not know banking I had pure mathematics and law, <laughs> which was, I should have just gone for accounting yeah. in, in retrospect. Mm. <laughs> Hindsight is 2020. So my dad was like, cool. I was like, why did he agree to that very quickly? Mm. Yeah, he knew what was going to happen. Anyways, so besides <laughs> the point. So yeah, I'm doing this math. Let's just call it math. And at the time I meet these guys, they're doing production there. And like I used to do, I was in the studio the whole time. So mm. by the time we get to graduation, people thought I was graduating in Moscow. And the day of my graduation, I, I was late. So I got <laughs> the gown for law. So people are like, what, are you in law? I'm like, no. And they're like, so you're in Mascom? I was like, no. And they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, hey, I'm in Maps. BBA. Mm -hmm. and BBA, like, sorry. And they're like, what? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, okay. This is strange. So mm. during that whole time, I stole a whole degree, basically. Mm. I went through all their classes. I went to. Oh, you were class. going to their classes? I went to their classes. I did their assignments. I did everything. And the, so I was mm. doing two things. And I was also running a business. At the time, because I'd come with all this experience, and my dad was uh, going through a lot at the time in terms of business. And I have my siblings who are outside the country and everything. He was like, I was like, all right, cool. So I started doing business. I, I One day we were broke. I'm waiting for the money. You know, you are Sinam Kopo, you know? So I was like, Mze, and he was like, Pambana. I'll call you when I got money. Yeah, I got your sisters and your brother to deal with. So, you know, Somebody. figure out, I thought you were enterprising. I was like, okay, <laughs> cool. So I was like, all right, if, as long as you said I should go ahead with it, yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. So this was, I was in first year, I was probably four months in, like already taking classes and I'm broke. You know, my mom had already sent me some money. But I know like in a couple of weeks I'm I done. It, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. So in Kachukwa, so I went with my one of my, my roommate to Kavazetu Vizuri. I had a laptop. My mom had to sell a car to buy me a laptop. Imagine. A laptop moja, but this jalopi we had to sell. So I have my laptop. I go all the way to town. We go to Nyumbani Hotel mm -hmm. and I ask to see the marketing manager. And they're like, okay. So weird. And my confidence, I looked like a kid, like I was a child. But I was like, they're confident. I was like, you know, this got to work. I got skills, y'all. So this guy comes through. Um, his name is Ben. Ben. I'm not going to say his second name. But he was actually Kenyan. And he was like, all right. So you're going to teach me? You're going to tell me about marketing? And I was like, oh, that's a trick question right there. I was like, no. You're already here. You're the marketing manager. I'm just here to help you. Help me help you. <laughs> 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 no. 
do I know? You're an older person. You definitely know what you're doing. And yeah. apparently, he had already been in agencies and stuff. He had worked for Scanned okay. in Kenya. And okay. So he knew what he was doing. And I was like, nah, man, I just need to supplement whatever you're doing. I'm good with events. You know, I can design. I can come up with ideas for events. We can work together. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, all right. Right. You make your design. So let's see what you... Uh, I'm not going to pay you. I was like, I don't need any payment. Let me get... Try to help you sell tickets and everything for your events. And we'll see how it goes. So we do the first event. It works. Mm -hmm. And that's the first, second lesson. Or it was not the first time, but the second time it happens. But then I realized, and this is a nugget. I tell people, if you want to do events, you need location. Mm -hmm. You need a location and you need to partner with the owner. Mm -hmm. So you need, when you do events, you need two partners. Either you have a media partner mm -hmm. or you have a location Venue partner. partner. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you have a media partner or you own the media, mm. that's why clouds mm. and wasafi mm. have so much power mm. because they, the, own, the they own the media. Yeah. Or otherwise, own the location. Mm. Most of the times, we don't own anything. Mm. And we're so just, you need yeah. to partner. Mm. You need to partner mm. Mm. when you're starting out. And having that relationship and make sure when you're partnering with the uh, location owner, don't agree to getting paid at the door. Mm. Karibu Gunyam Sasa, where we talk to successful people about faith. Get paid for the service because you're doing the service. You don't own the place. They don't make money from the door. They make money from drinks and food and their services. Mm. You're providing a service. So, of course, if you ask to be paid the first time, you have to work for free. Mm. So, the first time you need to show them your What value. you can do, yeah. yeah. So, for me, it was the design work and all the experience that I brought from working with Carlos and Rashid at um, Balamwezi. A lot of people quit at the first can you do it for free? Yes. Yeah. So I was like, I am the one who proposed, like, yeah. I'm going to do it technically for free, but for my ego, I was like, we're going to sell tickets. I know we're not making any money. Mm. We're not. Mm. But that established that relationship mm. that opened a lot of doors for me mm. in Mwanza, mm. in St. Augustine, because mm. by the time I was in my second year, I wasn't even, my dad would send me money and I was like, oh, oh, you're sending me money? Oh, Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. I'll mm. save this. And, you know, I would save the money and mm. buy myself nice things. I was a dumb kid. I didn't have anything to do. So I went through, reached my second year, second semester. My dad dies. Oh. Yeah. So he passed away. I went back home. I stayed for a very long time and I had to go back to school. So I go back to school. Thankfully, I was very popular with the, <laughs> with the teachers as well as a teacher's pet slash rebel at the same time. So the teachers really helped me go through and I really thank them for that. And then my third year, so the third year I'm going to school, my, my dad is no longer there. My older brothers were tasked to pay my school fees and my mom. So I was given money <laughs> to pay school fees, half by my mom, half by my brothers. So I pay my mom's and pay for the name. I get to stay at an apartment that my dad used to own in Mwanza. So I get into the apartment. One of my brothers like, do what you may with the money, but be careful. I was like, hmm, I don't know what that means. Put this money, invest it, and go. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so I was like, all right, I got experience. I know the market. I know everybody. So I go and talk to, at the time, it was Malaika Resort. Mm -hmm. This is another lesson. So you remember the thing I told you was, so the first thing was my dad dying. Yes. Because I knew Mwanza, I'll have more connection and everything. So I had a feeling this might happen. Mm. Yes, he did pass away. So I was like, okay. Because you never know. Yes. So yeah. I'm on my own. Anything happens... It'll work. I, I'll figure it out, right? So I do this whole deal. I get the, because I had already brought in uh, Joe Makini, I brought in Diamond. I was the first person to bring Diamond to Mwanza mm -hmm. for his biggest show, the Goldcrest Hotel. 
That's dope. Yeah. So yeah. I, of course, everybody knows this Gold Crest Hotel, but I did the designs, and, and this was right after he did the Mimani City show. Mm, and and quite expensive. The expensive yes. one. The mm. next day was in ones he was working with us. He doesn't remember, but we were sitting there in the City, Uban City. I did the designs. I did everything. I wrote the proposal. We got money from Pepsi, from uh, PPF. All these people supported us. And it was a big ass show. So mm. I'd already done that. So I'd already got that under my belt. Mm. And I did Yomakini mm. at my Ica Beach Resort. And I got him there as well. That's mm. how we even we're friends still today. Mm. Um and then I like I get this money, I got this capital. And my dad's advice was never use your own money. Ned didn't listen. I was a stupid kid. So I was like, nah, man, I got this money. I'm gonna put it. So I did the whole thing. I, I I felt like I did everything perfectly. But so I got a contract with Malika Resort. We're gonna do the show in their first floor, right? That's where the show's gonna be. Cool, cool, cool. I got I printed out all the flyers from my guys in Da, got it, the tickets, put billboards everywhere. The whole city wants to see DJ Choker. Mm-hmm. And the Choka because of his name yeah. was very marketable. Yeah. Just the name. Just the we name. had a bus of foreign students who were like, what does DJ Choker mean? I'm mm-hmm. like, well, <laughs> dude. And he was, everybody was pumped up. Yeah. Everything. everything is set. We started selling tickets, but a lot of people are going to buy at the door. So I'm here organizing transport for people because my Laika Resort is very far. Mm. So we got the students in the bus. Everybody in the buses were there. Get the, I get a phone call on the way there. It's like, dude, what on Akuja na Undoka? Like, what? This is like November, you know, it's rainy season. I'm like, hmm? what do you mean? To me, I'm sure the music system in me, sure. I get there instead of the first floor within Malaika Resort, we're in the parking lot. It's by the lake, Upepo na Pigia. How did that happen? Someone asumbua, I tell you, and the contract was. Oh, Malika Resort. I did not specify where in Malika Resort. So you just had it in your head where it will be. And I told them, mm. and they're like, "All right." But as per the contract, I did not specify exactly where within Malika Resort. So I'm to Misha Kule, but to the to the lake. Yeah, by the parking lot. Mm, by the parking but lot. if it was even the lake, the mm. beach side, mm. no, the the parking lot. It looked ugly. And I have all these music systems there. And I'm like, what the hell? And they're like, I'm sorry, the, the contract says, Malaika Resort, you didn't say where. <laughs> I was like, well, <laughs> shit. <laughs> so people are just coming, the buses, and the buses, and the buses, and the buses. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. In November, in the legs on bro, mm. Radi, mm. Pepo, Baridi, mm. Everybody's like, nah. So I have this bus full of students I've already paid. So I was like, you know what? I promised people a party. I have my reputation to keep. I just can't say evil. So I took DJ Choka and everybody. I took him to another club. It was called Club Lips Isamiro. Everybody, everybody had a great time. That day I even drove a bus for the first time because the driver had a Kimbia. So I had to, like, there are two buses. So I got keys to another bus. And I was like, well, experience. Yes. Yeah, so I drove all Isuzu Jan. Everybody's like, what do you think? I was like, shut up. He's getting paid. Yeah. Everybody got paid. I made sure everybody got paid. The next day, I'm going to get a laptop bonding and start over. So I'm like, I'm broke. I have nothing. I just have a nail, a cooler, come on, we're in Moja. I'm like 500k on the whole. I, I think it was like a million on the whole because Uzuri Kipinikile Ada ni miyo ni moja na wakitatu. That's where the cheap Ada came through. I was like, ah, miyo ni moja na wakitatu. So I'm like, like almost 500. No, I was a million in the whole in Nadaiwa. Mm. So I was like, all right, I could cry, go back to my brothers and tell them what I did or I need to figure this out. So at the time, I was like, all right, I'm not going back and telling them anything. So I was like, I have five months before I go to see, I have to do my exams. Mm. And you have to pay at least half of your... Yeah. yeah, so I was like, okay, I got five months. I need to figure this out. 
So I went to my friend. Um, he's very popular in our Fortune, Fortune, Fortune studio. So I go to Fortune and I'm like, dude, I need your help. And he's like, uh huh, what do you need? I was like, I need a laptop to design. So I was like, cool. So I'm there, I just write up a proposal. Yeah, you can get a TBL. I was like, I have this concept. I'm like desperate. And Mungu, I was like, there's this thing, Miller, we called it Miller Picture Perfect Moment and went to Club Lips. Uh, no, not Lips, it was Stone Club. And we got there, I got like a small section, put up a photo booth in Capella Avenue. I got like 300,000, see 400,000. Can I combo my laptop? <laughs> Paid those guys. And I was like, I'm never doing business with you guys ever again. Katoka. And I'm like, okay. And fortunately, Go Crest Hotel, Duna Fungoliwa at that time. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we, there, then Ben Sasa becomes a marketing manager for Go Crest. Mm -hmm. The guy from New Bani Hotel. Mm -hmm. And he was like, Dude, Karibu. you know, mm. not for a job, but, mm, but you know, do yeah. what you do best. Yeah. Design, come up with events. There's a club in the, and yeah, I was like, right, I'm jumping ship. Mm. But I was still popular in all the clubs. Mm. So I could get people in. And the fact when I pulled that off with DJ Chok and it was mm. still successful despite the failure. Mm. And this is another lesson is even when you fail, don't burn bridges make sure your reputation is intact. Yes. You can lose the money. Money can be earned. Yeah. Reputations. is much harder to build and, and quite maintain. easy to lose. Yeah. Very hard to lose. Very hard to maintain. Yeah. But that is your reputation. More away, like, um, notorious for being a hard nose rather than being not dependable. Yeah. Because that's the first thing that kills your business. Yeah. So I was like, all right, cool. Um, so, got this thing done. Kandelea, fanya kazi, all that year, nalipa kidogo, 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 kidogo. Paka nikalipa ada yote. I was like, all right. I never told any of my siblings what I did. Mm. Paka later in the future, like maybe two years ago. This is like 10 years later. I was like, you know what I did? And they're like, oh. I was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. So, yeah. Well, How do you get to salt? We're getting there. Okay. You, it's part of the story. Okay. Right? I, it's a long story. Okay. But it will make sense. Okay. So, let's fast forward. I get a job at Meza Chu. I get a job at um, Kiss FM. I was a producer. Kumbe. Yeah. It would be like Kiss FM. No, ma, it's Still. a long story. <laughs> Very cool. You gotta be patient. Very cool. So, I got a job at Kiss FM as a producer and a presenter. I was doing the Kiss Drive show and mm. I did the graphics for Star TV. Okay. While well, I was there, I learned a lot of things. I stayed there for like two months. Then my brother's like, no, Rudy Bongo, find a kazi at a bank. I remember I read your radio, I was I was like, I had an agreement with my dad. He said I can do whatever I want after. He was like, nope, he's not here. Did you write it down? I was like, shit, I should have wrote that one. Is your bro like much older than you? Yeah, he's older than me. He was like, he's 15 years older than me. Whoa. Yeah, so he's cool. much older. Yeah, yeah, so he was like, and I had no got your family. Yeah. Yes, so uh, he was like, Get out of there. Yeah. I was like, cool. So I have two brothers who are older. So this hard-nosed brother who's the first one, then there's the second one who gives me all the bad ideas. He's a very good guy. Very smart guy. He always like gives me these ideas like, you know, <laughs> I, I love him to death, but everybody has their yeah. part of the story. So yeah. he was the one who had given me, given me the idea of the the other thing and uh, investing and it. You up when you're, uh, you when you're uh, but that, and I thank God that he gave me that idea. So I went and worked at a bank. I got a job at Stanbic. I was an investigator. I got a job as a forensic investigator. I was, used to do with card, card fraud. Within, I started off as a temp three months. Then I got hired within three months. So I'd gone through the interviews. I want to go into investment banking. Mm -hmm. And then this is where I am on boy Nje. So um, at this time, the head of corporate investment banking, I got a Shose, mm -hmm. if you've ever heard of mm -hmm. it. And through the whole process. So um, the, I'm not going to mention the other guys, but there are two other guys. One is from Leeds University. One is from Malaysia. One is from Saudi. So the last thing to call were like, um, where did you guys go to school? Because they are in Leeds University. <laughs> he had a British accent. So the guy was like, yeah, well, in, 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 in Malaysia, Queen's Korea. Royal University, Malaysia. Oh, okay, okay. And you? I was at St. Augustine University <laughs> of 
Mwanza Tanzania. Safe to say I did not get the job <laughs> as in, in corporate investment banking. But somebody uh, in HR like my CV and actually I was the one who was uh proper banking and finance. Mm. The other ones that studied marketing, uh, mm. was all business admin. Yeah, mm. so I did banking. So they called me back, they gave me the job. They're like, "Do you want the job?" I was like, "All right, I'll, I'll work. It doesn't matter. I'll just do the work and I'll learn." One of the biggest here's another uh piece of advice I'd give anybody starting out. Even if you want to be an entrepreneur, right? You have to work in a place with established systems, some conservative ass bureaucratic system. And there's nothing more bureaucratic than a bank. Okay. Because that's where you learn about systems. And the best part about being an investigator, you learn how people steal, you learn how people act, and you learn how money flows and how systems work. Because imagine I was part of, I was one of those people who was able to go through all the data and find, and I was really good at it. I was almost recruited by the government after that. But yeah, so that's another story. Anyway, so like I was very good at catching people. Mm. I was extremely unhappy. How long did you do it? I did it for eight months. And then my brother was like, here's another thing. You know, working at a bank, you get very low interest loans. Mm. Do what you may with that information. I was like, hmm. <laughs> Another seed in my brain. I was like, okay. Six months in, after getting the job, five months in, I get confirmed. I take a loan. I buy equipment. I buy my laptop. And then I didn't have money. I bought a camera. I bought everything. Then the day in Apea, Barua ya kupandisho cheo. I was going to be a junior operational risk manager the same day I'm putting in my resignation letter. Mm-hmm. Everybody has thought I'd lost my mind. Everybody thought you were making the wrong decision? Everybody. Mm-hmm. Not my mother, not my friends, nobody understood what the hell I was doing. I was like, guys, I'm extremely unhappy. Very unhappy. I couldn't sleep. I had insomnia. I couldn't wake up in the morning. I was basically depressed. I was like, this is not what I want to do. I was very good at it. Very good at it. I used to, I saved. <laughs> Here's a, another first thing that you might never know. I wrote the policy that right now when you have, uh, do you ever get texts from your bank that don't share your pin, pin with anybody mm. or share all that information? Yeah. I'm the one who wrote that policy initially for Stanbeck mm-hmm. for anybody else because I used to get so many cases and when you do the investigation you just realize somebody was didn't just share their pin with their wife. Ali kom zembe tuna pin. Yes, oh mm-hmm. I could tenganisha so I had to go back and write a policy that would help and it saved the bank so much money. That's how I got promoted and everybody was like you're making your role redundant. I literally made my own role redundant by doing that because card related problems were like almost did not exist. I was even bored at work, but that got me there. So mm. that is also another value, like being a problem solver will always, I any height of good work, height of watcha, cap. Do the job, do it well, make it worthwhile for whoever you're serving, be it your employer be it your customer. Mm. As the more you save them money or make them money, the happier they are mm. and you will be rewarded because nobody ever snitches on the people bringing in the money. Nobody yeah. kills the golden goose. No. Mm. And if you're a golden goose, you will always get that value. Mm. I was just a very unhappy golden goose. Mm. So <laughs> so I quit my job. Mm. And for a while, I was going to pay a pair. Then I got a gig with... The mines, I went and worked as a communications person for Barrick, as a, as a consultant for another company in Australia. I was an Australian company and I worked with them for like six months. No, no, before that. Before that, I got a gig on TMT, Tanzania Movie Talents. Okay. It was a show. I got on there as a visual effects supervisor and editor. 
I worked with them. Then after that, I went to the mines. So I got experience on, you know, working on a TV show and everything and how that works. I did, I did all that. So that's how finally mm -hmm. into production. So, so. Yeah, so that's where I learned how to, I was, I was a good editor, but then I learned how to shoot with the camera. Mm -hmm. I was introduced to these guys who knew exactly what they were doing and all that. It was a very great experience. So that was my first time with production. Then the production in Kaisha, the first season was over. I needed something to do. I went and worked at the mines. That also fed something else. Okay. I, through the systems of the mines, <clears throat> I started learning how to work with people offsite, people who work on a short term basis mm -hmm. and projects, you know, because in the bank, I learned about processes. In the mines, I, I learned about people management mm -hmm. and uh, like living in, because this is a manufacturing business. Mm -hmm. That's when I learned that it has a very, very close proximity to production. How so? Because in manufacturing, mining, drilling, you're creating a product, which you start with raw materials. Mm -hmm. Then you have to assemble it. And with mine sites, mm -hmm. one and on a chimba, you get the ore, then you go to processing, then you're done, mm -hmm. then you go into QC, then you go into export, mm. right? Mm. But in the middle here, there are these people that do all that. Karibu Gunyamsasa, where we talk to successful people about faith. So tell me about Jyoti. Tell me about Jyoti TV, to be precise. All right. So Jyoti TV came about, um, this was 2016, early 2017. Some of the guys that we worked with at TMT had um, thought to sit down and try and create like spec ads for hmm. different companies. What's a spec ad? It's like a specification. Like you do an advert that looks like an advert for another company, but it's not, they don't ask you to do it. You do it on your own terms and then just to show what you're thinking the ad. Okay. It's an unsolicited ad. Okay. So it's basically like a different way to pitch. Yes. Okay. But when we did that, I was like, guys, I don't think this is a good idea for our market. Other markets, yeah, like in here, whoever, they don't know you, they don't care about you, they want you to up in bed. It doesn't work like that. The work of the agencies and then, so I was like, guys, no. But Jyoti was there and because we also worked with them on TMT. So they all left then Jyoti came back later with, because he saw at the time I had a studio because the meeting was done at, at my studio. Mm. So in Kinondoni. And then, so he told me what he wanted. He had this DVD of jokes and stuff he had recorded earlier, but he wanted to re-record the audio mm. because it wasn't very good. So we had to redub it for him. So I did it. And I, but then I, like after we spoke and everything, I was like, you know, there's an opportunity here. And there's this technology, like YouTube at the time was already mature, but it was not as popular in Tanzania. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. YouTube in general was very mature, but in Tanzania, it was starting to enter. Starting to become, we had yeah. Miladayo, we had a bit of, not, not all the artists were posting their videos on YouTube, but mm -hmm. we had v Vivo or Vevo, mm -hmm. but people were still going to Channel O mm -hmm. at the time, mm -hmm. musicians. Mm -hmm. Comedy was not even a thing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yo, you know, there's this thing. And I was thinking of that. I already opened up my own channel. I was like, let's try this out. So it was like, all right, cool. Like, you know, let's start with these ones. So we put up like two of them. And I was like, no, nah, this sucks. I, this, this is not the standard that I'm operating in. Okay, two what, videos? Yeah, two videos from the, from the DVD. Oh, okay. From the DVD. And I was like, nah, this sucks. So I was like, lesson learned from my... Um, experience in Mwanza was get a contract because people don't um, honor their contracts. When you're starting out, everybody's hunky-dory. But when things change and uh, shit hits the fan, people tend to become very different. Yeah. So hindsight is twenty twenty. So we went to a lawyer. We drew up a contract. He was getting 60% of the revenue. I was getting 40%. I was getting 50% ownership. He was getting 50. So we both owned the content that I was producing. Mm. 
one thing I wish I knew at the time was, and that wouldn't have fit in that contract, but most of the money, when you produce content, the money doesn't come from the content. No. It comes from secondary sources. Yes, so the content becomes a platform. It's like events for a lot of people. The event is a platform, and then the money doesn't come from the event, it comes from... So when we were starting, we did not know that we're actually generating income for these other people. Yeah. Seki Seki and all these other guys. Mm. But I was like, this is, we're creating the value because at the time, it was starting to dip. So we started, we got into the contract, we started producing and initially he was supposed to write. But then we realized very quickly he was copying some of the ideas from other places. And I was like, okay, even if you have inspired ideas, we need to take it to another level. So I was like, all right, everybody stop. So we shot these two episodes. They look visually interesting, but the concept is weak. Mm. It's been done before, this is weak. So I was like, I need to come up with um, a, um, a, a schema, like a, a method, a process again. Mm. So I started research. Then there are these videos on YouTube about um, uh, Chuck Taylor. Was it Chuck Taylor? The guy who does, no, the guy who did uh, Looney Tunes, Mm. Bugs Bunny, Mm. all these guys researched about that and how jokes work. And and I had dabbled in comedy for a while, but I did not understand till that time. And and this thing I applied, it's basic script. Scripting, but with jokes, it's a bit different. Speaking about dabbling in comedy. So I had a conversation with Evans um, yes. on another episode of Msasa. And he was explaining to us how one of his very, very early, if not first, comedy show. Yes. And, uh, yes. But anyway. Yeah. 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 I yeah. did. Okay. So I am, I have done a lot of firsts again. <laughs> yes. Yes. I'd forgotten when I was at yeah. Samak Samakji yes. with uh, Nani, was, yeah. I arranged, I pushed him to really do that. He was yeah. one of the people who inspired me as well. And I pushed him to do that show and his trousers ripped. <laughs> that particular episode and he had to wear a kanga. Yeah. So yeah, there's that. Yeah. <laughs> so we did that and with that experience and all those things. And then we sat. So I came up with that framework where there's a setup and there's the punchline. But then how does the punchline work? So everybody thinks about the setup, the hook, the setup, the punchline. So you got to hook somebody in, got to set it up and come up with a punchline. Mm -hmm. But the best way to do a punchline is to do something that people are not expecting. Yeah. So it was a very simple framework. And after applying that framework is when like UTTV started gaining momentum because people were always expecting this and we just on uh, like a oh, no, complete tangent and everybody was like, what are you guys thinking? Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. I was like, then later on I was like, guys, our comedy is a bit too dry. Let's layer it. And we started putting some layered things and that really gained momentum because of the layering. And by the way, Yoti is a great actor. Mm. If you give him material, mm. oh my God. He mm. was, I think that was like lightning in a bottle. Mm. That was one of like, it was very fulfilling, mm. creative, mm. not financially. Mm. So eventually, um, like there was this particular episode I used to love. It was, um, it was this episode about um, stuff. So I got that idea. I was on a bus in Mifika Makumbusho. And somebody was like, I'm a panda when you bus. There's the toilet in Makumbusho. And this other guy, I'm like, I'm a staff. I'm a staff. I'm a conductor. And the conductor was like, I don't know you. Then the driver was like, I'm a chen. Who is staff? I was like, okay. I, I don't know how this is going to work. So we go with Jyoti. And I'm like, so to me, because after I show, I'm a chapa. And the idea was, Jyoti is a staff. And the guy, the attendant of Oni Kipande, doesn't know who he is. And he's like, yo, disrespectful and all that. And the joke was very simple. So, so the, it goes like that. Yoti goes in and I talk and I'm there and I'm like, oh, what? what I know I'm some And he's like, oh, no, no, no. And then like, and I talk it on police. And the guy so, is like, oh, I'm so sorry and everything. And, it, and we're done. And then that day, Yoti was like, I don't get it. I was like, <laughs> you know what? Nobody gets it. But... 
let it go. At that day, uh, Zilipendwa, the one we called released, it was number one mm. the night before. When that episode was released, we became number one on trending. Mm. And everybody was like, and you just like I like, want to go to my chapati. He's like, yeah, I mean, you are too. I was like, <laughs> Negro, please. But it would not make sense, but he would still perform yeah. 100%. He would commit to the bit. Mm. And we used to get some proper. But, you know, as it is, as it is always is, paradise never lasts forever. Then mm. start having some problems. So... At the time, Yoti would introduce us as his production company and we'd be there and we'd pitch, we'd start producing ads with him and everything. But we were getting momentum. At the time, I was work- I started working with Agri and Clifford mm. and doing Voda ads and whatnot. And it was like, he was everything and he started taking ownership. Like he owned us. Mm. So... And it was not an ego thing, but I was like, yo, dude, but, you know, we need to, we're not making money out of this. Mm. You're making your money. We're not getting a part of this. And at that time, people don't know, Airtel wanted to take Yoti. And we were the ones who were negotiating that deal. Mm. Now, say, I'm me, Airtel, but yeah. that was supposed to happen in 2017. Mm-hmm. Then Tigo saw that and things just went like that. And then Tigo made us realize, after they realized, like, they don't have to pay us. They don't have to pay for Yoti TV. Yoti TV is making Tigo Konekana without Tigo having to pay. To do anything, yeah. They just need to pay Yoti. Yeah. Wherever Yoti is, we're like, hey, guys, we need the money. They're like, oh, so I'm managing Yoti. Like, no, not really. Not really. Mm. So anyways, thankfully, Yoti did throw us a bone. So we got this gig with uh, Tigo through another agency I'm not going to talk about. And then so that this is where so that I started learning about how agencies could really screw the pooch. Okay. I'm not going to say the name of the agency, but the brand was Tigo. So I'm not defaming them, yeah. by the way. It was not uh, Tigo's fault. It was nothing to do with them. But this is what actually happened. We did this project. Uh, this was the time we had Yazo Yazwe. And we did this whole thing. We're doing this live stream, like a hidden camera kind of thing. And we did all stuff. The agency that pitched it did not control it. And eventually I had to tell the client and everybody like, hey, this is not, I'm just a technical person. I don't handle the creative or the management of this whole project. Mm. And they were like, and we were left hanging by the, the agency as well as Yoti at that time as well. They left us hanging and we're like, we're in, in the hole. And we were broke because we did all the work. We get all the equipment and everything. And then the, they refused to pay. And they refused to pay because Yoti didn't want to redo it. And then, and that's when I realized like, you know, everybody's looking out for themselves. Mm-hmm. That's when trouble started brewing in paradise. Mm-hmm. So... I had to go back and start working gigs at night because I was 20 million in debt. I had to let go of my staff because I had a lot of people. Mm. And we still need, because we're still in contract with Yoti, we still need to produce the ads. So I had to supplement the income. So you can imagine we're shooting in the morning. I go at night on weekends, film at clubs and pick any job myself, not hire anybody to do it. I had to do it myself every night. It was very, but then we took on a whole lot of wali marage, bro. Marage me piko akila ina design, me piko chukuchuku, na kitungu, na karoti, na nazi, like ni ni wali arage, dave. Ugari because of ushibi, pigi mpunga. So, I was like, all right. It's not as bad as, you know, mm. the bread part, but yeah, you have two, three meals a day, but it's the same thing. It's the only thing you can afford. That's the thing that lasts long. Let's go with that. So we had to pay back that money and I had to go and take a loan. And this is something else. This is another regret. I took a very bad loan with ridiculous interest rates because I was desperate. Was it like a microfinance? I don't want to get into the details of it. Like just know one, but it was a bad loan, very bad interest. It almost doubled the principal. Mm. You know. Mm. But because I was desperate, I just signed it. But if I negotiated better. I could have done it or not taken the loan. Mm. Later on, I realized, but die. Mm. 
But that's what, and here's something else. Do not take debt, basically credit lines. If, if you're not investing that money in a gig, not even a gig, you're not investing that money in like assets, proper mm. assets. Usilipe watu, that's, those are liabilities. People mm. are liabilities, I'm sorry. Mm. But people are a liability. Mm. Because if once if you can borrow a copy of our work, on Ghana your staff, what could I? If they have to keep them on, you pay them when you can pay them. And if your business is a business and when I wake up, don't take credit when you're in trouble. Mm. That's the worst. Don't take credit when you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's the worst thing you could ever do. Yeah, because you just get deeper into the same hole. Yeah. Yeah. And, we, and you don't know when you're going to come out of it. Yes. Yeah. If you're going to take any credit, bro, when you come back, you can't get it. 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 You can't You have a contract, you have a PO, and you've gotten a 50% down payment. After that debacle, I have a 50% down payment. So I have a 50% In production, nobody. Mm. No exceptions. Mm. 50% down payment. Or no, because that almost killed my company. Mm. I had to struggle for almost a year to get back on our feet. Mm. With nobody's help, I took that loan, Kalipa Hatu, Watu Badamda, Kakimbia, they're not doing any work. I had to go back and still do the work. I was like, this is not making sense. I had so many staff, but I when we were done with that, I was like, mm mm. We, did, we kept doing Nani. Sasa Badai, we came up with an idea in order to. Um, monetize. I realized one thing. If you want to be rich, so, oh, matajiri what? They don't do service-based or at least it's a product-based and hachukui zaidi minimum ya yela mbo na chukua nishingi miatama. Na hachukui zaidi ya fukumi. Kengalea matajiri wengi. Look at Azam. Look at Coca-Cola. Look at the water companies. Look at, yeah, like the billionaires. Mm-hmm. Look at Amazon. Mm-hmm. Amazon only makes a fraction mm-hmm. of the profit. But they do a volume business? Is that your point? Volume is everything. The more people you serve, the less problems. You you run an agency. Yeah. You know how some people come to the house and they just turn over the table and they just turn over the table for no apparent reason. Mm-hmm that risk is deviated over a larger source of people when you get to do that. Yes. Um, and here's another uh, wisdom that I got from my friend Uno. While I was listening to his talk. And I may be, Achana na mikopo. Your biggest investor is your client. They'll yeah. give you the capital. Yeah. So that was something else he said. So when I learned those two things from different people, We started, wanted to start on, up a streaming service at the time. The, at the time, the only major streaming service was Tango TV. Yeah, in Tanzania. Mm. Yeah, and that was the OG one. And I'm not even going to take Nani. But what we need to do is we get into the market. So we wanted to, who had the point box? So we wanted to come in. Yuchi TV was our main one. And then to go to the development and putting money into it. So I was trying to tell Yoti, like, okay, this is our venture. So he wanted Yoti TV to be the one on Bondo, the streaming service. I was like, no, dude, we need other people and you don't want other people on board, but we own half of this. Mm. It was Ikanza Kwa Shida. And then at the time, Pia Ikanza Kwa Takazinyingi Zaidi, like, got more work from agencies. So these guys were giving me more business. And then he started treating us, you know, his ego started getting the better of him. I was like, dude, we're partners. He was starting to act as if he, I'm employed. I was like, uh, no, I'm not employed. And I was like, okay, this thing, I'm not making money out of it. Yes, I've started getting return on investment. And this, without Yoti TV, there are a lot of things I wouldn't have done. Because what I showed with Yoti TV, that got me my first Airtel ad, mm-hmm. which didn't involve Yoti, but I got that ad because of the work. Portfolio. I done, I done this, um, I done this parody, yeah, Muziki. 
And that's when people start seeing the quality of our work, like proper, when we put in money. So mm-hmm. There's a couple that we're filming, like broke, broke. Mm-hmm. But then when we did that, we put in money into that and it looked good. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's when I started getting ads. And people were like, okay, these guys can convey a lot in a space of one to two minutes. Mm-hmm. And the person who gave me that line was actually Bobby again. So big brother looking out and was like, Phew. You should be so not to Germany. You should be so not. So he just <laughs> gave me that line, and that was the first one. Then we started working with Agri, and we started doing Voda ads and all these things. And people are like, "Okay," and that's when the anomaly thing started coming up because we started doing these ads. The client is happy with our work, and of course, the agency was doing its work. So we're doing these things. They're supposed to go to digital, then they end up on TV. And I was like, should I be upset or impressed with myself? <laughs> you know, because we're doing it. It's now like in contract me production. Yeah. Yeah. Production is not production. It doesn't matter in end hour. Yeah, it doesn't matter. The channel business. is not your business. Yeah. It's none of your business. You've mm. done the work even then. But I, I don't know if I should say this, but with one of the clients, Arieto Kea, one of the people was like, dude, we need you to promote the quality of your work. I was like, why? Why? And they're like, listen, we're charging the client X X amount of money, which is in the six figures. One, two, three. Yeah, six figure amount, you know? Six figure in which currency? In T shillings. No, that's way more. I don't, I'm, I'm confused now. <laughs> <laughs> I think 12 figures. So, <laughs> so 100,000. Is six, six figures. A hundred thousand okay. T shillings is six so figures. hundred thousand dollars. Six, six figure figures. dollar wise. Okay, okay, okay. Six figure dollar wise. Okay. And we're getting probably not even five figures. Usually so they, 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 yeah, they're, they're charging the client. Let me just yeah. uh, say a four figure amount, you know, like, let's say like they're charging the client $20,000. Mm-hmm. I'm actually getting $5,000. Mm-hmm. for everything. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, hold up. So you're telling me with the budget that I'm actually getting at the five... It's four limit, times less than... It's mm-hmm. four times less from what you're charging, but then it's the quality is almost as much as the six-figure one because they can't tell the difference because that was the problem. Mm. Like, oh... You get what I'm saying? Mm. No, that's where the problem... I was like... It's at the 14 in here, but... Yes, mm. they're to like... The mm. To the clients. And I was like, oh, well... <laughs> He could have given me the. They're like, no. Because your conversation, yeah, one, but like. I don't know. I don't know. Post production buyer, because I don't know. That's my qualities. And the production manager is like this. I want to be was the general manager. The production manager was like, nope. Let these guys maintain their quality. That means those dudes need to push their quality. And he started going well. And at that time, we stopped working with Jyoti. I told him like, I can't continue with this. I'm not happy. I'm not, I, I'm not expressing, because I thought he was starting to force these ideas and I was like, I'm not committed to this anymore. After that experience and the fact that he threw up, he was one of the people that threw us into the bus, I felt like I couldn't trust him mm. anymore. And our relationship was, again, that's why I remember when I said relationships are the same business, romantic, familial, because when you can't trust the person you're in business with, to have your back, you can never trust them again. Karibu kwenye msasa, where we talk to successful people about faith. Yeah. You know, and I was like, no. But he was like, so you're dumping this whole thing? I was like, no. The whole team, I'm going to start over. So uh, Kipande left. I asked, mm-hmm. Kipande wanted to stay with me and I was like, no, this is a learning experience for you because yeah. I believe you would have to come back. Yeah, because you would become a, a lead now. <laughs> yes, yeah. because right now, Mimi and Nabeba all the pressure. Mm. But you've learned what you've learned. Yeah. And I, we had been together since the beginning of SALT, mm. but I started working with them since like 2013 mm. when I was doing my little, little project. So I was like, this is your opportunity. And he went and he was very successful. But I know he Gumbana. That's a whole nother story. But I decided, let me start over. So I hired somebody else and then that's where hiring. So I thought, oh, well, you know, you want me to let me hire. Oh my God, that was the worst. Don't trust somebody. This is something else I learned. Don't trust somebody. Don't trust somebody. 
Bro, you ain't no man. And brother, yani mimi najua. And you're like, okay. To fun and you give them uh na, that was when says I decided and these people almost got me bankrupt again. Garuja and to shit. Because I have to pay salaries and I have a contract with these people but they're not delivering. Yeah. Nobody is delivering. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like Okay, this is not working, especially mm. in production. Because production so kama unafanya kazi kila wiki au kila mwezi. When Joti TV left, mm. we're not doing it every week. Paka kazi patikana lakini yeye anaexpect mwisho wa mwezi and they're not performing. Mtu ana kinga mkono. My friend Unus called him. And his wife is called Anna, so it's Anna kinga mkono. Mm. So what on kinga mkono at the end of the month and you're mm. like no, like This is not working. This doesn't make sense unless you're doing a job apart from the administrator uh, who at the time was my brother who works every day and our housekeeping uh person who uh, to pick care of and find stuff care of those are the people you need to pay. If you're not bringing in money, I shouldn't be paying you. Mm-hmm. So I was like, "Nah, this ain't working." I fired everybody. And lo and behold, COVID mm-hmm. at the same time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "All right." So I also lost the agency. Mm. The particular agency lost to another agency. So they that relationship and because I'd been working with these guys, this new agency didn't want to work with me. Okay. Even though I was like, oh yeah, there's like, nope, we don't like you. Go to hell. Like, all right. So, we I'm done. Like, all right, cool. Yeah. I'll just chill. Everybody's and, buying. The only variable is time. Thank you. So I was like, cool. It's all right. But then I was like, even that agency look when I walk on my tatizo, I would observe. And I tried to talk to them, but they weren't listening. Nobody ever listens. I was like, guys, you're going to challenge, there's challenges here. And they're like, who are you? Like, You've never seen you. You've never worked with us. I was like, you know, I have experience with agents. Like, they were not listening. And I was like, all right, nobody likes to be criti- criticized. Yeah. And one thing that I've learned is to listen to people. You know, So another lesson one of my brothers taught me is when somebody says I hear you they're not really listening. When somebody says I understand and repeats what you're saying that means they are truly listening and understanding. When somebody says I hear you I hear you that means they're they're waiting for you to finish so they can come up with a counterpoint of what they believe in. Isn't that isn't that dependent on what they say after they've said I hear you? Because sometimes I hear you does mean like i'm hearing where you're coming from it's yes. just what is what follows after the i hear you is what tells you if they're actually paying When, attention or not and usually they're paying attention to come up with a rebuttal mm. they're not internalizing and this is what, something mm. that i've observed mm. once i was told i started thinking about it and listening to people mm. when i just hear somebody says i hear you like uh oh Yeah, like, okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so, okay. And then it's a rebuttal mm. all the time. Okay. It's nine I can give you 90%. Yes, I hear you, but there's always a but, there's always I is a kind of there's always a something. Yeah. But when somebody says I understand. When you hear that, you still have to listen now it appears. So, what do you mean? I mean, won't you then hitch 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 the hitch. If it makes sense they'll tell you this does make sense. If this the Aragonda Katagojo Kisema, I don't agree with this, but I agree with this, this and this, but this is not it. Mm. Most of the times when somebody says I hear you, I hear you, but this is not good, but this they'll get, they have already have they've already made a decision while you were speaking mm. to to tear what it is mind. that they believe in, yeah. So that comes in two uh two prongs and it's kind of you are the problem as well most of the time. Mm. But you did not also present something that or you did not create an environment to have a conversation whereby people can listen to each other. You really created this um antagonistic kind of mm. environment mm. whereby somebody wants to So in order for you to be listened to, you also have to be listening. And the best way to debate and not to argue is to listen to the points of Munzako come up with um concrete solutions or observations whenever while other people argue i have my stance i have your stance you're not listening to what your the other person is saying mm-hmm. and then you're not repeating it to them in unambia to like yeah and he's like, ah, yeah. Not, nobody's 
you're all not moving forward. Mm. You're just hearing each other mm. argue. Mm, 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 mm. But when you're having a debate that has a, a which needs a logical um, um, end point, let's say mm. a culmination at the end, you need to listen to each other. You need to understand the other person's perspective and point of view in order to use even their own words, not against them, but use their words in explaining your point of view yeah. and their perceptions. Yeah. Because I tell people, perception is reality. Yeah. Whatever the person believes or perceives to be their truth, mm. it is their reality, yeah. even no matter how construed it is. Mm. So at the end of the day, when you're having these conversations with people, which at the time... I did not know. So I just tell people straight up. And if people who know me from back in the day when I was younger, I was like, I was mean. <laughs> I had this reputation of being mean, blunt, and everything. And that's part of growing up. And yeah. I used to own it. Till later on, I was like, yeah. this is not very productive. Not, it doesn't work <laughs> it was, in your favor. It was not working in yeah, my favor, yeah. being that antagonistic person. These days, people are like, people who know me now, who met me when I was past, post twenty. Eight, I think 27 years moving forward, they're like, oh, Eddie's a real chill guy. And the people who know me from back then, they're like, Are you sure? We're talking about the same guy. Yeah. They're like, He's so, like, say, post 25 years, I was really chill. Yeah. Before that, no chill. So everybody's like, Oh. So, anyways, those are the things I tried to communicate, but I was not efficient in my communication. And then I was like, Okay, that failed. So I need to figure it out. And later on, and this is where a think tank comes into play. Okay. So this time I was trying to talk to my partner, uh, Martin, and be like, yo, man, we need to become an agency. And I was like, no, man, think tank is already an agency. I can't have two agencies. Mm. And we don't have that much business. Mm. I was like, dude, 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 come on, come on, come on. But again, all those things I used to see in the other agency was here. As well, and I was trying to tell him, like, yo, you know, there's this problem, this problem with staffing and all this and that and that. And he was like, yeah, I know, but this, this, and that, and that. And eventually, we lost the company. Yeah. And that was very heartbreaking. Yeah. Because we were also like dependent as salt because we're purely a production company. Yeah. So we needed an agency. Yeah. So these agencies have, you know, divorced us. Mm. And the agency that is our agency, mm. that, you know, mm. our, our, you know, partner mm. dies. Mm. It was devastating. Yeah. And this is in the beginning of COVID. Yeah. And we're there just trying to survive. So... Fortunately, before COVID, we had already let go of the other staff. Mm. So I only had our accountant, myself, and our housekeeping team. And I was like, I'm not going to let you guys go. Like any, I'm not going to go and get credit again. Mm. I just, I'm still paying off this debt. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to, we're going to reduce salaries. But we're going to pay each other when we get the money. Mm. Clearly, lo and behold, opportunity presents itself streaming. And thankfully, I had done streaming before COVID mm. as part of the solution. Mm. And the reason why I got called in, I went to sort out this telco's issue with streaming at the time. They were doing their end of year thingies, mm -hmm. their town halls, mm. and they were doing it in another region, in our region. The streaming, you mean live streaming, right? Live streaming. Right. And we did it so well when there's guys just standing around because they had really good internet. So this guy just standing, he was like, I think it's frozen. He was like, no, he was just standing still. He was like, is it that clear? I was like, yeah. Was, yeah. So during COVID, we started doing streaming. Right. And it was a whole new business avenue. Yeah. And I was like, opportunity presented itself. Yeah. Like, I was like, yes. Yeah. And the good thing is, it's not because it's a going to end up like, I can do streaming. I already built a reputation as a problem solver. Mm. So people contact you when, when they have something to when they need a fix a fix yeah which so, is the best kind of positioning when you think about it when you're starting off yeah but at the time after a while you want to be the authority yeah over the time. expert yeah yeah that people call first mm -hmm. and if you have how would nobody will call anybody else right yeah so that's where I'm gonna be when busy or you need to be an authority on your piece of the pie.
Mm. And it's not even a pie. It's an ocean. Everybody has an opportunity. And this is one thing that I also realize while competing with other people where my partner says, come back. Miss Ali, you're not competing. You're all not competing. Everybody's going for the same clients, the telcos, the banks. But you can build your client because after becoming an agency, Sasan, and starting working with, we, our first gig as an agency, we worked with Sika. Mm-hmm. And we did their campaign. And because we had this, and this is something that I was telling the other agencies, like when they started like um, vertical integration. So they're integrating, they're starting to do production when you mm. to save money. I was like, guys, no, yo, when you do that, you're going into our turf. Mm. What stops us from, from getting from your business? Turf, uh, uh. And they're like, ah, you know, Eddie, come on, you know, you can't be do that. We, we have, I was like, no, 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 no. Let's debate about it. I hear can you. Build capacity, yeah. Everybody can build capacity, yeah. but we have more capacity than you yeah. because Sisi, what is our barrier to entry? Is vingreza vingi and this good strategy and understanding of the market. Your barrier to entry is gear. Experience, skills, mm-hmm. and everything. And I tell people, so here's another thing. And not knocking on agency though, Nini, but this is the reality. Being an agency, Nikua mm-hmm. Wakala. And that part is simple. Mm-hmm. Just need to set yourself up. And I tell a lot of people, we should move from Kua Madawali to becoming project managers. Mm-hmm. Because what we're basically doing we are managing projects for our clients. We're financing our clients and we're doing manufacturing for our clients. Yeah. The only thing that we're manufacturing is solutions. Yes. We're handling finances because whoever has the strongest financial will and capacity is the one that wins. Mm-hmm. Then by then, we're basically a bank. Mm-hmm. We're basically a manufacturer and a project manager yep. with a little bit of art mm-hmm. at the end. Mm-hmm. We manage people, we manage logistics, we manage equipment, we manage time. Yes. Remember now why I told you, working at a bank, working as a miner. It all connected. It all comes into play eventually because that is the solution we are providing. The only thing is that I can add to that is, personally, I am a Yeah. Well, when you get to my turf, because it's like feeding the lion. Mm. If you don't feed the lion, it's going to consume you. Mm. I'm a hungry lion. Amazing what? So now, I've passed. I'm with the client. Client, mm. right? But now, I'm like, client, nice sometimes, and amazing what? Sometimes as good. But they want to put the capital. Why can't you come up and become, work with the client's client? Who's that? The people, the audience. The, yes. The idea is shilingi me tano. It's very sa, easy. Sa, sa, sa. Kupata shilingi me tano au shilingi fumoje au shilingi me abas. Kuatu milioni moja. Kuluo kupata milioni moja kuatu me. That's true. Volume. Volume, price. The four P's of marketing. Yeah. Place, price, promotion, product. Yeah. The question is, what product are you creating that people want? That I think that moves us to your question of going to market. Yes. So, before that, well, having done, having gone through many ups and downs, um, and p- possibly more to come, keep, what kept you going though? Like, why didn't you just give up or stop <laughs> or change route or whatever? Yeah. I've changed a lot of routes. Okay. I have changed a lot. I've learned. Everything is a learning experience. You improve the process. Mm. Here's something else. PIP. Process infrastructure people. Okay. You need to implement your process first. You need the right infrastructure. This is equipment, whatever, whatever, whatever. And then people. You need the right people. Mm. And when you manage people, for us, because it's like manufacturing, and like mining, you don't want permanent employees who are not doing everything every day. Yeah. For us. Yeah. What kept me going is I realized, Kwamba, I am not, I am unemployable after a certain point. Yeah. And I realized 
I don't have a safety net. Yeah. That's if you're an acrobat, right? Yeah. On the trapeze mm. and you don't have a safety net, you got to make sure you stick the landing, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, safety nets, I do not, uh, by the way, I do not advise this. If you have a great job, don't quit your job. Yeah, keep it. Keep your job. But if, you go this, this is like being an, a trapeze artist without a safety net. So I'm like, I am unemployable. I'm a threat to half of the people that will ever employ me. I have too much experience. I have, any, in Takwa, I'll make people uncomfortable. And the moment you start making people uncomfortable, they push you out. You, you out to, any, yeah. When you come, you can be Oh, like, oh, you know, I used to have a company. Uh, well, you know, yeah. you're doing too well. Like, you're, you know, he's going to leave us soon because after yeah. after So I was like, there is no option for failure. Also, I am thankful, Kwamba, some of the decisions that I've made have given me ways out relationships relationships are the most important thing in this business any business but mostly our business if you don't have good relationships with people what or how to go to there yeah people will never call you no matter how much communication is key mm-hmm. here are five things okay that will help communication is key mm-hmm. perception is a reality perception is a reality yes value over price Value of a price. Yeah. Don't go for the price. Go for the value that you can provide. Yeah. So, don't be Felicia. What's that? Felicia, not as in Felicia, but Felicia, yeah, so I assume Felicia. Okay. Be a problem solver, not a problem creator. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's a fa- fifth one, like in the Tabaki now, I mean. What is it? Yeah. I just feel like it. Okay. I only miss out. Either one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... We have a segment yeah. in our show. Um, and this is like the last segment of the show in a twin boxing. In this particular segment, we dive deep into very specific solutions. So, Kutoko Akina Felicia. Uh, and the theme we're going on with right now is going to market. So, for instance, what I'd like to know is someone like you, yeah, who has been employed been entrepreneurial in the job and then been an entrepreneur as well who started and done a couple of things and is continuing to do so and is even beginning to think about different layers to add more value and be more valuable by becoming a client's client. I think that's fucking brilliant. Um, Looking back and knowing everything that you know, the next time you want to take something to market, um, please share with us what would be like your touch points. As a product, as an agency, as or Eddie. And what do you mean? Sorry, I need to understand. Sure. What do you mean a product to market? My product? What kind of a service? Or because <laughs> that's the thing. Oh, that's the thing. Yeah, because okay. there's ways of service. Yes. The kind of product, the kind of service, and the kind of client. Okay. So, content as a product. Okay. Okay, let me give you a technique that I use. And it's worked almost 90% of the time. Okay. And it will never... I hate to kata. We call it consumer mapping. Okay. What is... The consumer of my product. Who is? Who is the consumer of my yes. product? Mm-hmm. Who is? Or even what? It could be an animal. Who is? And once I figure out who's consuming the product, who's paying for the product. Mm-hmm. And if you want to be rich or successful, be the first person, not the last person. Because a lot of businesses fail. That's why the whole agency thing and being a production company was challenging. Yeah. Because upo wa mwisho. You're in a chain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, once you realize that, how best can you reach, how best can your service or product reach these people at a bigger scale? How can because you scale? 
How can you scale? Because that will determine price. Because the more you can scale, the cheaper you can be, or rather the more affordable you can be. Yes, value. Mm. Because, for example, as an agency, I can only work with a few people. At a time. At a time. Yeah. Even if I hire more people, they will not solve the problems. Mm -hmm. And it's a matter of trust. So I have to charge them an exorbitant amount that they're willing to pay for my solutions. And probably as an agency, I work three times a year from July to November. Mm -hmm. This is like my season. After this, I don't get any work till next year. Yeah. But that is not... I will end up being uh, a slave to customers mm. because there's if they're not happy and you're working with few people, they are more or less guided by the whims of their emotions. Yeah. So how do you make sure you reach as many people at a, you know, at, not as the lowest, de, you know, denominator, but getting as much value to as many people as possible through leveraging what you have either the skills that you have or whatever. When it comes to content, figure out a way, either cut out the broadcasters and, and get straight to the people, but also get as much money to you as fast as possible. Mm. Mm. So know who your customer is. Yes. They know who is paying because sometimes it's not the customer. It's the Somebody customer else. is just an influencer too, right? Amen. Yes. Yes. That's and, uh, and get the first and be the first one to get paid. Yes. And then figure out how to scale. And that's how you go to market. Awesome. Thank you, Eddie. You're welcome. Karibu <laughs> Kunyamsasa, where we talk to successful people about failure.